Okay, so continuing on with our uh, 1v1 Bercel Capo uh, for Japan. He bought two transports, a fighter, two infantry. As you guys know, when I do my UK Blit, normally if they buy anything less than three transports, that's a signal towards lean towards going ahead and going sticking with KGF rather than KJF. If they stick with a three, tran three transport buy, then I go KJF. Uh, he did choose to use his carrier battleship to take out my cruiser, so his battleship was able to absorb any hits. So he did not lose anything, as others, if you've been watching mine, go, they do the two fighters, and they've lost a fighter. Uh, I think that's what happened in the team game, actually. Um, however, he did find himself... Uh, I, I've been chatting with him a little bit on offline. Uh, in a predicament where we had two subs, fighter, bomber, still hitting season 61, and originally he was going to put his carrier to protect his transports, but then he realized that cruiser, battleship, destroyer was not a great defense for his two subs, fighter, bomber. <clears throat> so he switched it out, meaning he's got just a destroyer protecting his two transports. I got my bomber, one, two, three, four five six or six so here once again uh we'll be able to take out or most likely take out the destroyer and two transports it's definitely worth a shot um the only thing that I, I, what I was really playing with is okay what could i do could i save my bomber right so you know i hate to lose the bomber in doing it because we're gonna lose 12 ipc to get you know, to kill 14 and 8, so 22. So, yes, it's good, but more, even even if it wasn't negative, even if it was negative, the tempo effect on Japan is still huge regardless, either way. So, um, it's worth the shot, even if I do have to sacrifice a bomber. But what if I don't have to, right? I got four infantry. He's got three infantry up here. We've got a couple fighters we could potentially move up into that zone although we really need that u.s fighter over here to protect tj so we can't really count on the, the u.s fighter helping because we really need him and tj and really honestly truly i think i need my russian fighter down here as well because he will have tank blitzing infantry artillery bomber and battleship hitting there um, so i really need to put two fighters in there to be frankly honest this fighter though know, he can get one two three four so We'll be able to use him on the Ukraine attack and get back. U.S. can get back. We could get the U.K. fighter up here. And I was looking at, well, what if I attacked? What if I went three infantry and artillery against his three infantry? It's like a 55% chance of winning that. And then landed, move my infantry over. Then I could have an infantry, two fighters, and a bomber. And if I took that, then that would be great because then... This fighter that could go one, two, three, hit there. These two fighters could go one, two, three, hit there, land here. These two fighters can go one, two, three, hit there, land there. All five of those fighters would be taken out of the equation. The only thing that could hit me would be the bomber then, so then I'd be safe. But again, we're talking about like a 55% chance of winning that. Um, if we don't win it, then we've got five fighters and a bomber hitting whatever I put there. And even one infantry, two fighters, and a bomber, that ain't that ain't going to do it. Plus, you'd have whatever infantry survived my attack, too, potentially. So, kind of risky, and I ended up putting a lot of money in there. And it, at the very least, it had to be the bomber and the Russian fighter that would be stuck in there. And so that's pretty high, would be a pretty high value target for him if it did not go well. Um, so I'm a little bit leery on that, especially since I'm leaning towards KGF anyways. If it was KJF, then killing out the, you know, killing and trading off Japan units would be good. But I really think we're looking at a KGF at this point because he lost a fighter for Germany, so he's a little bit behind there. Japan, if we kill out these transports, we'll put him really behind. If nothing else, he built one transport low, so he's already a little bit behind. He'll be a lot behind if we kill those two transports. So, 
starting to look like, well, maybe I'm just going to have to sacrifice that bomber. Um, I also have this fighter. Could go one, two, three, four. It could come in here, and this fighter could go one, two, three, four. And we could potentially try to land here, but then he would also have his transport that could add to the attack then if I did try to land it over in, in this vicinity instead. So that's not really any better. Just add one fighter, but him adding an infantry and artillery to it and battleship and cruiser to it. So it would definitely add, the, the fight would be saying to stay here. And the best I could do uh, is just straight up defense, four infantry, two fighters, and a bomber versus three infantry, five fighters, and a bomber. So not great odds there. Um, if I want it, then I would be okay. But A, it's only a 55% chance of winning. B, that means my fighter's not helping up on the German front. And if we're going KGF, we'd rather be trading up here with the Germans rather than trading with the Japan. So I got a feeling we're just going to try to make this a little bit of a headache and... Uh, go ahead and focus our forces on this German front instead. It's a tough decision for me, to say the very least. Um, so now we get to the U.S. build. So U.S. build, one, they're down to four German fighters now. So they're already one fighter low for threatening my Navy. Two, my, my cruiser's alive. Well, that's not necessarily, a, you know, a lot of times cruiser's alive. But my I do have my Pearl carrier and destroyer alive so I don't think I need to buy the extra destroyer I think I can go ahead and do a three transport buy or or at, at the very least a two two transport and you know save my money to spurge next turn or I'm gonna get a little extra money I can spend I need to buy a, I don't need to buy carrier destroyer so we definitely need to get I'm, I'm still going to stick with the carrier because that helps tempo as well as helps dead zone. The C zone, as any fighters here, will help dead zone C zone 14 from the battleship so that we will have that dead zone so I don't have to land my fighter on Gibraltar like I was thinking I was going to have to do. Uh, he can just be sitting on the, chilling on the, safely on the carrier and still dead zone C zone 14. Um, you know, actually, that, as I said, I think I do need to move the fighter there because I need him for dead zoning. 16, 17, now that I think about it. Anyways, we'll have the other fighters coming in here. <laughs> we'll still be able to dead zone 14, and we'll have the fighter on Gibraltar. And, uh, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll go that route. So, we definitely want two transports. So now it's a matter of how do we spend that last 14 on between, we need some ground, right? to match up our transport so we got f four guys we're going to take so we're going to take three infantry and the tank out this time so we're going to be leaving an artillery here this transport's going to be bringing these two guys over but he's going to need those two guys right um so that leaves us a and AA and an artillery, so we need two guys at least for our two transports. Now our two transports at least are got units in them, and so then it's a matter of okay, we've got an infantry and an AA that we can start working over to Canada that could potentially meet a transport that's built this turn in season 11. So that's normally how I go about it is to. Go ahead and build me a third transport. But I am going to have a transport living that I could go ahead and build two infantry instead this turn. And I'm going to stick with infantry. That my transport here is going to live if I take Morocco because one, two, three, four, he can't hit me. Then I could come back and pick them up here and immediately pivot shift up this way. Or I could bring the build the transport to try to get up here and then bring him up with a build next turn. I actually think I'm leaning more this way because 
I'm thinking about bringing my both my US transports this way, which means I don't have any going up that direction. And so even if I build the third one here, he'd be coming up. The other two would be coming down this way, hopefully for the mid. One would be coming up for infantry or AA. He can only take the infantry to take over one of these. So I think I like the two, AA, two infantry now come back and then build the transport and I can build better units and these guys will be a little bit free for countering any Japan coming back and hitting Alaska which hopefully they won't be able to if we kill those transports so I think we're just gonna go to infantry save a couple IPC instead and uh, a little bit of a unique buy not something I've normally done a carrier two transports for infantry I don't know that I've ever done this exact buy on US one before but it just kind of how the circumstances have, have played out Now, either U.S. or Russia could take um, Quang Tung down in here. Uh, I think I'm gonna give the uh, give it to the U to the Russians actually, and we're just gonna move these U.S. guys on back because I like having those two to attack somewhere else later on. So we're not gonna attack there. I don't think we. Oh, yep, yeah, we do get these guys attacking. That's right. We're going to go ahead and take Morocco. We're going to sacrifice the the transport. Our bomber do nothing good. We're not going to hit there, obviously. <clears throat> I believe that's our only U.S. attack, right? Right. Just got to talk to myself sometimes. I'm the bank, I should put the destroyer in 13 and possibly get a sh get a hit on him. I think I might do that actually. I mean, he can hit there, but you know, he runs that risk of me taking out another uh, airplane. And we'll have enough. I think we'll still have enough that uh. We'll have everything, everything that we want to be dead zoned, appropriately dead zoned. One, two, three, four, five. So from here, he can come back. He can come one, two, three, four, five, six. So he can hit these three zones. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five, six. He can land on those. Actually, one, two, three, four. He can land into one of those or land into one of these if UK land takes one of those. Um. Gonna bring that cruiser up. He'll be threatening the C-Zone 14. So yeah, we're gonna go ahead and move that fighter on up that way. We're gonna move that fighter on over there. This guy on over there. Boy, it's been a while since I've done a KGF. I'm almost uh, forgetting my <laughs> US-1 move though. I don't need this sub to go back, right? Oy. I'm gonna be a little rusty on my KGF bits here. Actually, you know, we don't need to go there. We can take you. Sorry about that. You can go that way. We're going to be bold. We're going to assume we're going to hit that destroyer at the very least. And he won't have a Japan destroyer in sight. So we can come straight at him. Because he's going to want to build, have to rebuild his... He's going to have to rebuild his... Uh, transport. I've got these two subs I can hunt. Him as well, so they'll be coming into the fray up this way and pressuring him. So we could go 58 where he couldn't block us, we could go 59, 51 where we could easily come on back down. 
I think we want to stay in range of 64 though, right? <clears throat> Is there any advantage to 59 over 58? 59 can get to 61, so can they? They can get there. So I, I, I think we're, we're gonna come up, up. We're gonna be a little more aggressive and go to 58. For that little extra pressure, we do need to make sure that we are on submerge. Nothing silly happening there. <clears throat> Oh, these guys. Don't want to forget about these guys. Could try to s spread them then by coming up here. But I think we're just going to come up. We're just going to pull back. All right. So we do have four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten transportable units, and one, two, three, four transports. Maybe five if he doesn't hit them. Um, so I'd like it because two of these are AAs, and so even if we don't, so if we don't use the AAs, we can still bring him back, bring him over. We got some flexibility here. I like it. I made sure I was safe from him. Right, one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. Five, six, yeah. And Japan's bombers way over there. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. For a second, there, I thought I may have left him out in the in the dead man zone. All right. I think that's it. We're going to use artilleries, so I'm going to go with the four three. Oh, whoops! Is that four three? Was it? Four four by, excuse me, four four by. Um, so that I got more coming up. Going off the top of my head, I'm gonna double check these in a second here. I think that's the attack I want to do. That leaves us a few extra infantry. We could maybe put one more infantry over into here, right? Make that a little more safe. <coughs> At the same time, I do want to... He's going to have eight. He'll have 15 units going into there. We've got seven... 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. My two planes makes 14, so yeah, we're not going to have that dead zone. He'll, he'll be able to stack that G2 regardless. Oh well, so be it. So that does mean we could use uh, an extra infantry on one of these here or there if we want to go a little bit heavier. So I'm going to double check that real quick. Yeah, as is, I gave myself 57 and 60% chance. Doing this puts them both up to 80% chance. And that's going to keep West Russia more safe. So I think I'm, we're just going to go aggressive. So we're going KGF, and we're building up uh, U.S. pretty quickly, hopefully. And the U.K. pretty quickly. We're going to go ahead and uh, be a little more aggressive there. And that'll also let me be able to bring my tanks down here in case I gotta plug any bleeding down this way. Good. 
Good job, fighter. You did your job at least. Ooh. <coughs> Come on. Infantry, do your job. Come on, infantry. Ooh. Oh, this is pretty important here. Five. Whew. Oh, man. That got a little bit scary. Because the thing is, is if he doesn't get there, then these five tanks can blitz to West Russia or Caucasus. Uh, plus, of course, he has his transport going to Caucasus. So, <laughs> made me sweat that one. Come on, just just do it. Just get it done. Thank you, fighter. My fighters did their jobs, at least. Now our artilleries need to do their job. So if this goes poorly, I'll double check out what it looks like if I retreat. What I have to keep in West Russia to protect versus the two bl two tank blitz, four fighters, and a bomber that could attack me. But we really want to go ahead and take this. That that's the the kill we're really looking for is just go ahead and take it all the way out. We're going KGF. We want to kill Germans. One for one. We can do one for one. All right. Three. Three's great. Three for one's even better. Hate to see those artillerys get get toasted next turn, but <coughs> nonetheless, that means more chances we get one or two hitbacks at least. But most importantly, that means West Russia is 100% safe. So I'm going to bring my tanks down this way. I'm going to do this to create as much just some headache for him without having to use his planes to have to go up that way. Not a big headache, but it's a headache at the very least. Where do we want our fighters to be? That's going to be the next question. Put one in there. There we go. I do have to admit, I've had a rough day today, so my brain's not 100% into this, so I, y'all might be able to pick up some inaccuracies here, and there probably has been some inaccuracies, but we're going to go with it. We're going to say we know what we're doing. What we got coming here? We got, so we're going to put a couple infantries and artilleries. Looks nice. Nice little squeeze play on Germany while hopefully Japan's going to lose dearly. Alright. Um, he could try and take his bomber here. I did not double ch I should have double checked my defense profile, make sure I don't have bombers to go before infantry. Because that would be an interesting play to take a take a shot. One, two, three, four, and then land him over here. Uh, I didn't think about that. I should have double checked, made sure my defense profile went the other way, which I honestly I can't remember what my defense profile looks like as far as bombers and infantry on my um would be the us's right so on the, my submerged profile i don't even know what that is i'm curious now i 
Uh, okay, so we have bombers down after the infantry, so we'll be okay. Good to know. <laughs> Honestly, I had no idea what that what that setup was. Uh, so anyways, so we do got two fighters, a bomber, and potentially a destroyer pressuring C-Zone 15 to prevent a destroyer by. Hopefully. Of course, a destroyer could be killed easily, so it'd still it'd only be two infantry, or excuse me, two fighters and a bomber. Of course, he could come here and take him out, but then we would have two fighters and a cruiser and bomber that could potentially hit him there, unless he take both Morocco and Gibraltar. So we've got that pretty well dead zone, 17 itself. Um, if he doesn't go that way, that means this guy lives. Ah, son of a gun, I forgot my fighter down there. Do. Do, 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 do. Well, that hurts things out a little bit. We can kiss TJ bye bye. I mean, we're, Africa will be secured. But dang it, there goes a perfectly good U.S. fighter. It's going to get wasted. Do, 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 do. That fighter was supposed to be here. Like I said, not on my f clear focused brain. Anyways, if the Russian fighter was here, that would have given us a better dead zone here. Bomber and two fighters dead zoning 16. With that, he could probably, his best bet is to take the tank, infantry, artillery, bomber, battleship, attack here. Wipe this out. His transport will, transport battleship will be safe because these will both be German hands. And that means I could only have a bomber fighter hit him this turn. But since we're doing a KGF, it's not a big deal. We'll, we'll, we'll get to him, but dang it. I just hate the fact that I wasted that fighter. I just let... And, and this these troops just get smoked. Oh, well. All right, here we go.